We are going to talk about the Vesper model or the Vesper theory, which is used in order to predict the geometry and the structure of molecules. Now, Vesper stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion, and it's a pretty long and sophisticated name, which sometimes makes students think that this is a very complicated subject. But I will try to convince you in this video that it's not actually so bad. So, valence shell electron pair repulsion, and the key word here is the repulsion. As long as we understand what this repulsion refers to and we're able to apply this principle, we should be able to predict the geometry of many molecules. So, in order to understand principle, let's start with something that is not actually about uh, molecules and atoms, just a, a simple concept and it can be anything. If we have any central unit, whether this is an atom or anything else, what the Vesper says that is we need to be able to predict how the other atoms or units connected to it are going to be arranged in space considering the fact that for example in this case if we have two units connected to the central one do not like each other so they repel each other they really want to be as far apart from each other as possible so in order to make that geometry the most optimized what we want to do is we want to push these two units away from each other and if we do it the optimal angle for these two is going to be 180 degrees so if i put them like this straight just away from each other and this is 180 degrees this is going to be the optimal geometry for this structure that has two units connected to the central one so what about if we have three units connected to the central unit? So let's put the central unit and put three other units here. One, two, and three. So how can we arrange them to be as far away from each other as possible? And you can pause the video for a second and try to get the optimal geometry and then check the answer here. So for three units, what we need to do is input to the central unit here and we're going to put the other three at 120 degrees so one we can put on the top and then two on the sides like this and all the lengths are also going to be the same and all the angles here are 120 degrees so the same thing of course can also be represented by pointing the groups the two groups up and then one of them pointing down it doesn't really matter how we show them and this can be shown in any orientation but it's the same thing so don't be confused about that what is more important here is that the angle is 120 degrees because these units on the central atom do not like each other. They want to be as far away from each other as possible. So what if I have four units connected to the central unit? So let me put here one, two, three, and four. How would you arrange this to get an optimal geometry so that the groups are as far from each other as possible? And again, you can pause the video and think about this. Okay, there is a high chance that if you're trying to put four groups from away from each other as far as possible, then you might have come from a geometry that they are at 90 degrees. So let's put 90 here, and this refers to the, all the angles here. And this is normal, everyone is going to predict 90 degrees, unless you know the answer, unless you know that it is not actually 90 degrees. So what happens is that it turns out if you have four groups connected, you can actually switch to a 3D geometry and you can say that the two groups are going to be pointing on these sides and then I can have two other groups, one of them pointing towards me, this representing with a wedge line, and then there'll be another one that is pointing away from us. So this I'll put bigger and the other one smaller. Or this can be also drawn from the side. So if I put it like that, and put the groups one pointing up one on this side and so now this is going to be pointing towards us and this is going to be pointing away from us so it's a 3d object and it can be drawn in different ways but again what is important here is to understand that this is the optimal geometry and the angle here turns out to be 109.5 degrees it can vary from different molecules but this is averagely the optimal angle considering that all these groups units are the same we're going to cover only these three types of geometries arrangements and we're going to name them so here this is one now we have the second here and this is the third these two are the third so 90 degrees is not correct so we're not going to look at this and um, we're going to name this so this is called linear this is called trigonal planar 
and this is called tetrahedral. Now if we switch to molecules, what we need to remember is that the central unit is always going to be an atom, so this has to be an atom, while the side groups that are connected to it can be either atoms, and can be a really long chain, many atoms, or part of the molecule, but at least one atom, or it can be electrons. Depending what we have on this side, atoms or electrons, we're going to take a slightly different approach when we name this structure. For example, if I have methane, the formula of methane is CH4, so the central atom here is the carbon, as we know from the Lewis structure. So if I put the carbon, I'm going to have four hydrogens connected to it. One, two, three, and four. So because I have four units around the central atom, one, two, three, four, then this is a tetrahedral geometry. On the other hand, if we draw, for example, the Lewis structure of ammonia, NH3, and we remember that there is a lone pair on the nitrogen based on the Lewis structures. So what happens is that the nitrogen will be in the middle, then I have one hydrogen, let's say put it up, and then I have another hydrogen, and then now another hydrogen here pointing towards us. And this lone pair, which is also considered a unit, is going to be pointing away from us. So let me just put two dots here, and this will be the electrons. Now these four are arranged as a tetrahedral, so it's a tetrahedral geometry, but that refers to the electronic geometry. This is electronic geometry because I'm also considering the electrons here, the lone pairs of electrons. If we need to name it as a molecular geometry, if we ignore this lone pair. And so the ammonia can also be drawn this way. If I put a nitrogen here, I'm going to put the lone pairs on the top and I'm going to put the hydrogen and then hydrogen here and then one is pointing away from us. Tetrahedral is a symmetrical geometry, so it doesn't matter on which side I put any of the groups. Don't be confused about that. So when I name this as a molecular geometry, I'm going to ignore the electrons. So I'm going to discard this and you may wonder why, but one way to explain this would be if we take a really sophisticated microscope, some certain new microscopes allow to actually look at the molecules, you're not going to see the electrons. What you see is the atoms, the nucleus, because they are denser, they are heavier, so they're going to be imaged, but the electrons are not. So if I draw the ammonia based on this approach without the electrons, so what will happen is that I will have the N, one hydrogen, another hydrogen, and one pointing away from us. So I cannot name this now as a tetrahedral, but it's going to be called trigonal because it has three sides, and now it's going to be called pyramidal, not planar. Here it's planar because everything is in the plane of this drawing uh, board or the paper, well, this is not planar. And to summarize the names of the molecular and electron geometry, you can use this little table here. In this representation, what we are seeing is AX, 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 and then we have AXE. E is the electrons, X is the terminal atom, not the central one. So I can have a central atom with three atoms, then it's trigonal planar. If I have four, it's tetrahedral. For example, this is the this is what we looked for, the ammonia. If I have three atoms and one lone pair of electron, I ignore this, and this is going to be the molecular geometry that we talked about, which is called trigonal pyramidal. Same, if I have two atoms and one lone pair of electron, I'm going to ignore this lone pair of electron. I'm going to call these based on how many atoms I have on it. So this is called the band geometry. Now, for any molecule, in order to draw the Vesper theory, follow these steps. First, what you need to do is you need to determine the Lewis structure. You need to write the correct Lewis structure because unless we have the correct Lewis structure with the electrons, with the atoms, we'll not be able to do it. Second, you're going to count how many atoms and lone pairs of electrons are connected to the central unit. So this is not how many electrons, but how many pairs, how many pairs of electrons we have around the central unit. Then we're going to arrange them to minimize the repulsion, which means that put them as far away from each other as possible and then we'll go based on the chart to actually name this structure. For example, let's do for water. So H2O, 
And if we check based on the Lewis structure, we're going to see that water has two lone pairs of electrons. Actually, oxygen has them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the oxygen in the middle. And now I'm counting the steric number. So steric number refers to how many atoms I have around the central unit. I have two hydrogens. So let's put it here. I have two atoms. And I have two lone pairs of electrons together. So two lone pairs of electrons. Let me just put E here. So the steric number is four. I have four things, four units around the central atom, which means that if I want to put them, go back here, I need to put them in a tetrahedral geometry. Four units, I'm going to put tetrahedral. So let's put them together here. Let's put the hydrogens first. So this will be the two hydrogens. And let's put one on top and one on the side. And then I'm going to put the lone pairs of electrons. So lone pairs of electrons in a tetrahedral, one is pointing towards us. Let's put it like that. And then we have another lone pair that is pointing away from us. So four units arranged around the central unit, 109 degrees, about 109 degrees. And so at this point, finally, if I want to name the molecular geometry, based on our procedure, we're going to ignore the lone pairs because we don't count them when we're naming the molecular geometry. So if we do that, we're going to have oxygen and with two hydrogens like that. And now this corresponds to the bent geometry. So the molecular geometry of the water is bent. Now the bent geometry can result from different electronic geometries. For example, hypothetically, you can have central atom A connected with one lone pair and you can have two other atoms, let's say B and B. And as an electron geometry, the angle here is 120 degrees. But if I discard the lone pairs of electrons, I'm going to have A with B and another B. And this is also bent. But here the angle is 120 degrees because these lone pairs are here. This is the it's the lone pairs that are pushing these two groups down and keeping them at 120. So this is bent and this is bent, but here the angle is about 109, here angle is 120. So there's no really direct exact angle for the bent. It really depends on how the electron geometry of the molecule is. Let's look at another example, something that has a double or triple bond. Let's put carbon dioxide. So if we have CO2, again, based on the Lewis structure, this is step one, carbon will be in the middle oxygens on the side and each oxygen has a double bond. Now, each oxygen has also two lone pairs of electrons. So if I put two lone pairs of electrons, now I'm going to look at the central atom carbon and I'm going to determine the steric number. Okay, so the steric number is equal to two atoms and no lone pairs. Carbon has no lone pairs, so this is two. And I'm only looking at how many atoms are connected to the carbon. It's not important whether this is a double bond or a single bond, right? So for example, if it was triple bond, it wouldn't be, it's not possible. But even if it was triple bond, we still count them as one because I'm looking at how many groups are on the central atom. So if the steric number is two, then the only way to bring it to optimal geometry is to put them at 180 degrees, and this will be a linear geometry. And finally, one other way to talk about the Vesper theory to convince you that this is not really so abstract is you can actually look at the balloons. What happens here is that we're saying that the central unit here is going to be the center where the two balloons or three balloons are connected. So right here, this is the central unit, right there the central unit, and we have here the central unit. So if I have two balloons connected to it, it's going to be 180. Three balloons, all of these angles here between the balloons are 120 and here it's going to be about 109 degrees. And this is actually a pretty good example representation because in fact when we're saying the two atoms are connected, let's say carbon with the hydrogen, it's coming from an overlap of the orbitals. So carbon has an orbital, let's say sp3 or sp2, whatever it can be, and then hydrogen also has an orbital, s orbital, and let's say this is sp3. So what it is, is that the orbital in a way is represented as a balloon. And if I want to arrange the orbitals optimally, I'm going to get to this geometry. This is a little bit about the hybridization, which is a different topic, but it just shows the idea how this works. Check the examples below, do some more practice to get confident in this topic.